Hi, I'm David the Bruce, and here on Steal This Show, we've started a little, mm, several episodes on Annie Oakley from 1954 through 1957, a TV show that has slipped into the public domain, hence that's why it's on this show. But it's an important one, a very, very, very important one, because back in 1954 when Annie Oakley came on television, she was the only female superhero on television, the only one. There were so many cowboy films, I mean tons of cowboy films coming out your ear tons worth of cowboy films, all starring white males, you know, maybe Tonto, Jay Silverhills was the exception, but, or, I don't know, Cisco Kid, you know, if you, but still white, you know, maybe Hispanic, but white. So Annie Oakley was the first female superhero on television. And um, it, 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 it's important because of what her character meant to so many young women at that time. Women, you know, at that time were mm, seen more as mm, humans to be domesticated, shut into the house, raising kids, cooking meals, doing laundry, didn't really have uh, jobs on the outside. Um, if you were a single woman, you might be called an old maid or something. But here, in the midst of all of that prejudice and bias and sexism rides Annie Oakley, free of any man, bringing in the bad guys, bringing them down. She is amazing. And I think police departments could learn an awful lot about and uh, from the, this series, Annie Oakley. And I'll tell you why. When she brought in the bad guy, she never killed him with her gun. She'd knock the gun out of their hand. She, she, she would wing him or oh, anything, but she would never kill anybody with her gun. Her gun was only intended for self-defense, and when needed, um, she used it to bring the bad guys in, but not dead. This is very unusual, very unusual. This show is, is, is so amazing on so many different levels. When you watch the show, I'm going to put some factoids on the side. Pay attention to them, and they'll help you to understand even more of the significance of the show and some of the inside stuff that's going on anyways. So without any further ado, here's Annie Oakley starring the underrated Gail Davis. <laughs> the entertainment bullseye every week with her hard riding. Street shooting. And suspense. Sometimes the sheriff's niece has to follow the trail of killers. They're dangerous men, and a girl has to be prepared for anything, but there's some varmints that are hard to track, and even a bigger problem, such as my brother, Tag. Well? Hi, Annie. You don't hire Annie me, young man. I've been chasing you for the past two miles, now hand over that report card. Aw, oh, sis. Come on, Tag, hand it over. Where's Pixie? Back there, in the bushes. Well, you better get him. Uncle Luke's gonna have something to say about this. Pretty bad, isn't it, sis? The report card, I mean. Yes, Tag, it was. The worst part of it was you're trying to hide it. I thought if nobody saw it, everything would be okay. Oh, Tag, that's bad thinking. Two wrongs don't make a right. They never have and they never will. I reckon I didn't think of it that way. I reckon you didn't. You know, I remember someone else who didn't think of it that way one time. And they just about started a full-scale war in Diablo. 
Gee, when was that? Oh, about two summers ago, Tag. The year you and Uncle Luke were away on a hunting trip. I had ridden out of town to look for Lofty, who was supposed to be at the office attending the business. But I had a pretty good idea where you'd be. And when I reached Canyon Lake, I found I'd guessed right. Lofty was having such a good time while I did all the work that I decided I'd teach him a lesson. I mean, leave all the work for me, will you? Oh, I mean, have a heart, will you? Look, I'm sorry. Gonna get my clothes, huh? Okay, Lofty. Well, that certainly took you long enough. I thought it was supposed to be women that were the slow ones. But you'd have trouble dressing too if somebody'd been taking pot shots at you. Sounds like somebody else is in trouble. It sure does. No, no, don't bother about me. Howard's been shot. He's back there on the road. Howard Bishop? Yes. We've got to get back there right away. Take it easy, Howard. Mr. Kenyon will be here with a carriage in a minute, and we'll get you to a doctor. It's too late for a doctor. Annie, I want you to do something for me. Yes, Howard. My daughter, Priscilla, she's in college in the East. Send for her. Daughter, but where? How do I get in touch with her? The information is in my will. I left her everything. Please, Howard, save your strength. Take care of her, Annie. She'll need your help. She's... She... Can't believe it. What happened, Mr. Kenyon? Well, we were... We were on our way into town to a stockholders meeting. A shot came from up there. Howard was hit and started to fall. I made a grab for him and lost the lines. And the team bolted and I lost control. Don't worry, Annie. I'll make all the arrangements about the funeral. You know, it's only thanks to you that someone isn't arranging for mine. They'll probably be sorry to hear about that. They? The lowland farmers. You think they're responsible for Howard's death? Well, I know they are. Jesse Clemens and his farmer friends threatened to use force to stop our hydraulic plans at the Yellow Rock Mine. I hope you're wrong, Mr. Kenyon. I know the farmers are worried about their land being flooded, but I can't believe Jesse's a killer. Howard's dead, Annie. Somebody killed him or had him killed. You mean just because he has controlling stock in the mine? Exactly. Howard's death stops a vote on the hydraulic issue until we can settle his estate and distribute his mine stock. Well, then he didn't tell you about his daughter either. Daughter? What do you mean? Well, before Howard died, he told me about a girl back east. I never knew that Howard had married. I... I assumed he had no heirs. And the people in the town don't know either. Whoever killed Howard sure in for a surprise. Because the decision about using water at the mine is in Priscilla Bishop's hands now. I sent the telegram tag. And three weeks later, quite a crowd was gathered to greet Priscilla Bishop. Everyone was guessing what she'd be like. But to look at Lofty that day, a person would have thought Jenny Lind herself was coming in on the stage. Why, Lofty, I really declare. And that get-up, you look almost like a gentleman. All right, go ahead and kid. But it isn't every day a young gal comes to Diablo. You know, come to think of it, after the stage comes in, 
You just might not rule the beauty rooster out here anymore. Priscilla's a mighty pretty name. There she comes! Whoa! You don't mean to say that all you folks came to welcome plain little me. I'm so thrilled. Miss Bishop, I'm Annie Oakley. Welcome to the Arbor. Well, thank you, honey. The pleasure's all mine, but... Oh, what's that you call me? Miss Bishop. You are Priscilla Bishop, aren't you? The new owner of the Yellow Rock Mine? <gasps> Boy, are you confused, dearie. My name's Florence. I came to work at the saloon. But, of course, if you have a, a mine lying around with no owner... I'm Priscilla I'm Bishop, Miss Oakley. Gloria B., an Indian. Wow! I've been mistaken for a lot of things, but never on India. I'm sorry, Miss Bishop. I, I know. You weren't expecting an Indian. I'm Howard Bishop's adopted daughter. We just weren't expecting anybody so pretty, miss. This is Lofty Craig. My pleasure, Miss Bishop. Priscilla, please. And Russell Kenyon. How do you do? Oh, Mr. Kenyon. Howard mentioned you in his letters. You're a large stockholder in the mine, aren't you? The largest next to you, Priscilla. I've been looking forward to your arrival. Thank you. You're very kind. Get Priscilla's bags, Lofty, and I'll drive her out to a new ranch. Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. You better leave those bags right where they are, Deputy. What are you talking about, Frank? Why, do you work at the mine? This Bishop's your new boss. That's just it, Mr. Kenyon. The way I figured, a lot of boys ain't gonna like it working for a redskin. Why, you... Now, listen, Frank, and the rest of us. If anybody that doesn't like it, they can start looking for a new job. A redskin's got no business being a boss over a white man. One more word, mister, and you won't worry about mining gold. You'll be digging for your teeth. You think so? <laughs> this gentleman coat didn't fit none too well anyway, any? if I've caused trouble. Oh, that's no trouble, miss. It's a real pleasure to stop talk like that. Come on, Priscilla. I'll take you on out to your ranch. Lofty, tie a target to the back of the carriage, will you? Sure, Annie. I'm sorry about the little mix-up, Priscilla. Those miners are a hot-headed lot. Sometimes they take a little time to get used to things. But you'll find out. They're on your side. I hope so. Wouldn't have to be no sides, Kenyon, if you people would give up that fool idea for getting your gold out faster than normal. You got your nerve, Clemens. Keep your comments to yourself. Please, Jesse, there have been enough differences for one day. Miss Bishop needs a rest. She's traveled a long way. I reckon she does need a rest, Annie. She's got a big decision to make for such a little girl. She won't be intimidated by you or your lowland farmer friends. Priscilla owns the controlling stock in the Yellow Rock Mine now. You can bet she'll make the right decision. I hope she does, Kenyon. I hope she does. What's he talking about, Mr. Kenyon? What is this big decision I have to make? Well, it's nothing to be disturbed about, Priscilla. It's simply a matter of business. Howard made the decision before he was killed. I'm sure you'll want to carry out his plans. Then you think that man, Jesse Clemens, killed Howard? That's Russell Kenyon's idea. I don't think Jesse would kill anyone. But it does seem to make sense. If the farmers are so frightened of being flooded out. Well, what are facts and what makes sense aren't always true, Priscilla. The truth is sometimes hard to find. You know, no one in town even knew that Howard had a daughter. Keeping it a secret was my idea, not his. My parents were killed when I was three by white renegades. He took me in, adopted me, raised me as a daughter. When he settled here in Diablo, he sent me east to school. You mean you haven't seen him in all these years? Oh, yes. He'd come east to visit when he could. Well, I guess I'd better get back to town and let you get acquainted with your new home. Well, I'll be in the mining office tomorrow. I'll probably see you then. All right, Priscilla. Oh, Annie, is that you? Come on in. What do you want? Just a word, miss. 
My name's Jesse Clemens. Yes, I know. What I'm going to say won't take much talking, but I want you to listen good to every word. Are you trying to threaten me? No, miss, I sure ain't. I just want to tell you some plain facts about what'll happen if you go ahead with hydraulic mining. I've been told about that. The drainage water will inundate the lowland farms. Is that what you mean? Them fancy words, miss. But you sure heard right. It'll flood every one of us farmers out, and we don't aim to let that happen. Even if it means another killing? And this time just an Indian? Look, miss, I ain't one to be worrying over skin color, but I'll fight any force, white or red, that threatens to destroy my land. Have you finished? No. There's just one more thing you ought to get straight. Yes? I didn't kill Howard Bishop. Good day to you, miss. It's very simple. Either we use water methods or we let the men go and close the mine down entirely. We just can't get enough tonnage out by hand anymore. I realize that. Well, it seems to me that you'd want to respect Howard's wishes. After all, he was doing it for your people. My people? Well, yes, yes. Howard intended to devote all the profits from the Yellow Rock Mine to the Indian tribes in this area. Provide food, shelter, opportunity. All the things that the white men took away in the wars. You know how strongly Howard felt on this matter. Seems apparent after all he did for you. The farmers, Mr. Kenyon. Their lands and their homes. Anyone think of the Indians' lands or their homes? No, I'm afraid not. This is your chance to make up for it. By helping them just as Howard planned. Please, Mr. Kenyon, let me have a few more days to think it out. Certainly. But remember, Priscilla, you can't run a business on sentiment. Someone is bound to suffer. However, you will let me know your decision as soon as possible. Of course. Well, did it work, Kenyon? Yeah, she says she'll have to have a few more days to think it over. Where are you heading? To try and think things out, Annie. I'm afraid college didn't prepare me for making a decision that has to hurt someone. The farmer's on one side and the miner's on the other. I just don't know what to do. I'm sure you'll make the right decision, Priscilla. Just give yourself plenty of time. I'm going to. I'd sure hate to be in her shoes. So would I. No matter what she decides, there's going to be trouble. Priscilla was really in the middle, wasn't she, Annie? She sure was, Tag. And she spent a lot of days trying to make up her mind. Naturally, she wanted to carry out Howard's plans about helping the Indians. And everything that Russell Kenyon had told her kept going over and over in her mind. Finally, she decided he was right. Someone had to be hurt. And this time, it wasn't going to be her people. And you've made up your mind you're going ahead with the hydraulic plans. Yes, Annie, I am. I know there's going to be trouble, but I'm afraid that's the way it'll be. Priscilla, will you come with me for a few hours? There are a lot of things I'd like to show you that might make a difference. All right, Annie, just for you. And I'm not going to change my mind. Oh, well, maybe you won't, but at least give me a chance. I showed Priscilla acres and acres of farmland stretched out over the valley. And looking down, she could see the vast areas. We rode through the land that the farmers had spent their lives cultivating and talked with the men who had transformed a once barren desert into productive soil. The women, too, told us their feelings and how dreams for themselves and their children became reality with the growth of the valley. By the time we got back to the Bishop Ranch, Priscilla had changed a lot of her ideas about the lowland farmers. But it wasn't until then that I found out the one thing that still kept her from changing her mind. She told me what Kenyon had said about Indian conditions and what Howard Bishop planned to do with the mine's profits. Then you're doing this because you think it'll help your own people. Yes. I have a chance to help the Indians. No one else is doing it. That's where you're wrong, Priscilla. The U.S. government realizes what a great injustice has been done, and they're doing everything that they can to help them with money, land, medical care, and food. They're doing much more than you could ever hope to do. But Mr. Kenyon said that He I... told you wrong. Everything that I've said can be proved. You can check with the Indian agents or even the tribes themselves. Oh, I don't know, Annie. Why should he, he lie? Said... Why, I don't know, but... Well, I intend to find out. Think it over, Priscilla. And remember, two wrongs don't make a right. Hi, 
Priscilla. Morning, Annie. You're in town early. Too early, I guess. Mr. Kenyon isn't in the office yet. Oh, here, sit down. Thank you. I uh, came to tell him my decision. You were right, Annie. I realize that now. Two wrongs don't make a right. I've decided not to use hydraulics, even if it means closing down Yellow Rock. You'll gain a lot of friends by your decision, Priscilla. Mr. Kenyon will be upset, though, but as he said, someone has to be hurt. It'll be a lot easier for the miners to find new jobs than for the farmers to clear new land and build new homes. Mail came in, Annie. Oh, hi, Priscilla. Hello. Hey, there's a letter here for you. I was going to run it out to the ranch. What is it, Priscilla? It's a letter from Howard that must have reached school after I left. They sent it back here. It was mailed the day before he was killed. Dear Priscilla, hope you're well. We are very busy here. The survey proof... I don't understand this. What's wrong, Priscilla? Here, Annie, read it. The survey proved conclusively that hydraulic mining would flood the lowlands. So I've decided against it. The mine can continue to operate, though the profit will be much lower. I expect some opposition at the stockholders' meeting tomorrow, especially from Russell Kenyon, whom I've already told of my decision. Kenyon was lying about everything. Money is a motivation for murder for some people, Priscilla. And Howard was the only person standing in his way. You mean Kenyon killed my father? Had him killed, yes. I'll bring him in, Annie. No, wait a minute, Lofty. This letter proves him a liar, but it doesn't prove him a killer. Proves it to me. I know, but you're not the jury. No, we've got to find a way to get more proof. I think I know a way that we can make Kenyon show his hand. But we'll need your help, Priscilla, and it'll be dangerous. I'll do anything, Annie. Lofty, see if Kenyon's in his office yet. No, it's still closed up. Good. Sit down, Priscilla, and write what I tell you. Mr. Russell Kenyon, have reached my decision. We'll meet you at the ranch. Signed, Priscilla Bishop. She's there like the note says, Kenyon. You sure you're going to need me again this time? Only if she doesn't decide our way. If she does, you won't get this signal. I still think it's a wrong move pulling the same stunt you did to get Howard Bishop. You're paid to shoot, not to think. All right. You're the one that's got to talk your way out of it, not me. Come in, Mr. Kenyon. Thanks, Priscilla. I'm sorry I'm a little late. I had a little business to attend to in town. Your note said that you'd reached a decision. Yes, that's right. And? And I've decided not to use hydraulics. And you're going to let your people down in spite of Howard's wishes. I'm afraid that's the way it's going to be. Ah, so be it. Uh, tell me, have you notified anyone else of your decision? No, no one. Why do you ask? Well, it's only that I think that we ought to let the other stockholders know first. Oh, that's only fair. Then we'll ride into town if you care to. Might as well get it over with. Yes, we might as well. Oh, uh, I'll ride with you if you don't mind. I can pick up my horse when we get back. All right. There goes our hired killer, Annie. Right according to plan. Uh, right in Ambush Canyon, too. All set up by Russell Kenyon.
up the reins this time, Kenyon. No sense taking a chance on another runaway, was there? What do you mean? Uh, what was all the shooting about, Annie? That was just your plan going wrong. We've got your hired killer. Hired killer? I don't know what you're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Take a look. Well, I've never seen that man before in my life. Save your breath, Kenyon. Your boy here talked. Said you hired him to kill Howard Bishop. You're all through. You can't prove it. I think you better get on the ground, Kenyon. You're less trouble down there. Actually, he didn't say a word, Kenyon. He's too full of water. <laughs> Your plan worked real fine, Annie. Thanks to Priscilla. I'll have to admit I was a little nervous. Let's get back, Lofty, and tell the people the mine's going to operate as usual, without the water that'll ruin the lowland farm. Yeah. I think some of the folks are going to want to come around and apologize to their new neighbor. Keep them covered, Annie. I'll get the horses. Gosh, Annie, that was quite a story. Now I see what you mean about two wrongs not making a right. That's why I told it to you, Tag. But I've still got to show your report card to Uncle Luke. Hey, Tag, did you see what I did with that card? Sure, you put it in your pocket. Yeah, but it's gone. Yeah, it fell out way back in the road. I was so interested in your story, I plumb forgot to tell you about it. Forgot? Why, you little Kyle. I... <laughs>